welcome to my YouTube channel Nelly the Coder. In this tutorial or this lecture we're going to be talking about unidirectional data flow. That is basically the third principle ReactJS was built on. Before that we learned two other principles that I gave lectures on. So make sure that you watch the previous videos in order to follow along this tutorial. Let's just dive into the lecture. So we have learned so far the first two concepts. That's basically the in the declarative uh, uh, paradigm, DOM manipulation is, is being handled by React. And also the React gives us the components architecture. The third concept that made React really, really popular is this idea of unidirectional data flow. What do I mean by that? Well, so far we understand that React is just a JavaScript library that allows us to write more JavaScript to have interactivity on our websites and in React. We have this idea of state which you can think of as a JavaScript object that describes our app. So you can look over here and see how a JavaScript object looks like if you're familiar with JavaScript. So you can see we have the state of the application over here. We can we have different properties like is logged in, or username, has friends, user ID, user email, etc. So all the data of our app is within this state. And then we also learn about this idea of components that we can build using React with this weird kind of HTML looking thing, but inside of our JavaScript file, this idea of state, which is the data or application works with the components, which are built using what we will eventually learn is called JSX. So this weird looking thing that you think of is, uh, it's an HTML, but it's not actually HTML that is called JSX. So we'll learn that eventually when we go through the practical or hands-on lectures. So it's a simple like syntax inside it, um, the JavaScript and uh, these all combine to essentially give a React library two things that is the components that we have built, the state or application. And you can think of it, this as a function or React library as basically simply a function that we give all these things uh, to what it's going to do. And it's going to create what we call a virtual DOM that you can see on the right side. It is created. Uh, it creates a JavaScript version of the DOM. And this is just a JavaScript object that describes our app into what we called this virtual DOM, which is a tree-like object. Like this is this that gives uh, React a blueprint of how it should update the actual DOM. This idea of unidirectional data flow means that anytime we want something to change in our web page, well, the state has to change. So if you want to see some changes in the application, the state must be changed. So that is the data that, that has to change on our app. So what happens, for example, if a user click on a sign out button, the React is going to intercept that and say, hey, somebody just clicked the button, the sign out button. How does that work? Let's say I clicked on a sign out button. React is going to say, hey, someone just clicked uh, on a sign out button. How are we going to change the state now? Well, internally, we would say that uh, if somebody clicks on the sign out button, we are going to change is logged in value to a false and react as soon as the state changes, reacts to that change and says, hey, the state just changed, combines the new states and components we have and updates the DOM. You see the data only flows in one direction. A better way to think about this is like this. Our application is simply built with this virtual DOM. So this JavaScript object that describes our application and as soon as a state changes, it's going to trickle down that information and let everybody know, that, hey, the state just changed, is logged in, is now false. Display this version of the application. So it will just show you the updated version of the application then based on the change in the state. Data can never move up actually. So for example, uh, the state as we uh, will learn can live in different locations and different components. For example, this is another component that, and we can say that a, the state lives here for now. So if any change happens, then the state won't move up. This is all these changes can only trickle down now. This concept is hard to explain without actually seeing uh, it in a code. So if you don't get this right away, don't worry. We'll explore this idea and revisit this idea of one-way data flow throughout the course. But the key takeaway here is that by having this restriction of data only being able to move down from the state of our application all the way to the DOM, 
and if any changes or events happen that changes the state while we go back to the state and that state changes trickle down to different components in one direction. It's, this is a restriction on how data can move through our app and by adding this restriction it's really easy to debug code. For example, if there is something wrong with our sign out function, I can go wherever the state is logged in uh, leaves. For example, uh, we have defined it in a top level of component or anywhere else. Let's say I just leave leaves in this top component here. I can go over here and know that this is where the bug is happening and whatever is underneath this component, well, that's it. I don't have to look outside of the component. If the tree was massive with thousands and millions of components, I only have to look into that place where the data exists and where the data flow through. Again, this is a really hard concept that we will explore throughout the course, but I hope that you learn something new in this lecture and you by now you will have some a basic idea of how the state changes um, and how it actually the react uh, you know intercept the changes in the state and how it updates the virtual dom for us i hope you have got something new from this lecture please subscribe the channel and uh, click the bell icon for more updates and then, until that i'll see you in the next lecture